This is a new book that I've done. The title is obvious. The picture is me a little earlier in life with the University of Chicago in the background. The preface says what I wrote, which is that the kidneys have to deal with the stone forming salts and water. They have to regulate how much water there is in the body. They have to regulate the concentrations of all these things. And at the same time, they have to balance what they remove against what we take in. All that has to happen. And the urine they produce really serves those biological demands. Incidentally, it may or may not cause stones. That's the main thesis. There's a table of contents and it works. So for example, it could take you to the beginning of section one, which gives you some idea about which physiologies matter to stone patients. Calcium, oxalate, phosphate, acid base, talks about saturation. It's all these footnotes, you say, well, I can't read a book with all these footnotes. That's for an academic. No, maybe so, but not really. The footnotes are an additional sort of text. They're my other self. Sometimes they're funny. And they're designed to make things easier to understand. It tells us about the great systems that have more important matters to deal with how much fluid we have in the body, how much sodium, how much potassium, how much calcium, what do you do with the oxalate we produce? All of that has to be dealt with by kidneys that make a urine to deal with those needs and incidentally may produce stones. So you might say, well, the urine that they make is determined by what I do, and that's the answer. That's the whole idea behind this book. It's the details of how what you do creates the urine you make and therefore your stones. It talks about evolution because somehow or other, we always ate and drank as best we could and stones would have been the end of your life without modern medicine and modern surgery. Well, why is there a section one which ended here and a section two which comes later? Well, because section one gives you a broad overview and you don't ever have to read section two. If you feel like it, section two goes beyond the kind of broad brush strokes of section one. And it takes you into big time stuff, saturation and how they work, the predictions that saturation makes about stones, the uric acid problem, the, the citrate problem, plaque and plugs, which you probably heard about and never fully understood. The wonderful thing about 24-hour urine panels, the physiologies that control the urine saturation, and by the way, allow us to stay alive, sodium and water, for example, and how they work together, how water balance works, what happens between meals? What happens with meals? What happens with low sodium diets? Water balance itself. What are you doing when you drink more water? What are the kidneys doing? What is the brain doing? And then how does a, a scientist actually measure what your kidneys are doing? That's something probably most of you won't care about. The fact that water can prevent stones, but not that well. And then racial differences. Black people make stones differently from white people because they conserve water. Well, you might say, what happens when I drink a lot of water? The kidney adapts, the body adapts, and in ways that would surprise you. Of course, there's calcium in this book. Lots about calcium between meals, and with meals, and how they're really different. When you're fasting, patients differ from normal people. They have more calcium in the urine. When you eat, everybody loses more calcium. And that seems to be the same for everybody, normal stone farmers, and it has a deep biological purpose. 
that we haven't even fathomed yet. What about calcium balance and bone? All of it's here. You can read about it. You can try to understand it. You can try to help yourself. And sugar, the world's worst thing. It raises urine calcium, and there's no calcium with the sugar. You never want to use it if you don't have to. And salt, it raises urine calcium in everybody, all the time. Worse in stone farmers than normals. And a lot of times that calcium comes right out of bone. Thiazides are here, and all the details of how they work. And the hormones, don't get scared, the hormones that regulate phosphorus and calcium and bone. Maybe that's not for everybody, but some of you may want to know. Those of you who are doctors surely want to know how calcium in the diet lowers urine oxalate. And then some examples, hyperparathyroidism, a little bit of kidney disease, some of the new genetic defects and how you can use them clinically. And then we move on uric acid stones, citrate, acid-base balance. It's all here. And it's all about what we do when we take potassium citrate and what our diets can do that's much better than potassium citrate. How fruits and vegetables prevent stones. How they taste better than potassium citrate. All of it. Well, you might say, it's a big book and it's too hard for me. No, it isn't. It's actually a rather modest book. It's charming too. And the main point, you control your own fate. Your diet is in your own hands. If you read what I've written, you can fashion a diet that will help you, will make a lot of other things unnecessary. And for my doctor friends, a few last words about how much about stone disease is really clinical medicine and nothing more.